What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at it again with another video. So, we got a much requested one. Uh, Super Kick Studios dropped Roman Reigns, The Reign So Far, a 30 plus minute video. You guys wanted me to check this out. So, that's what I'm here to do. Sit back, get you a snack. This is about to be a, a long one, man. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to be uh, pretty entertaining. Super Kick Studios make some great wrestling retrospective videos and, and wrestling related content. So I'm looking forward to this. Um, I also want to send this message to everyone that says, oh, I'll be riding nut uh, Roman Reigns. I'll be uh, riding Roman Reigns nuts, paws, all that extra stuff. I just want you guys to understand the reason why I have been more invested in Roman Reigns since I've since after he debuted with the Shield, after they was trying to force him down our throat, and I didn't really too much care for his character. To see such a character change, to see him legitimately carry the company through the pandemic era, he made SmackDown a must-watch situation. Hell, people only still watch SmackDown because of him to see that transformation to see some of the great matches he put on and has had why not be a fan of something that's literally the best thing on wwe television it is i'm sorry whether you want to admit it or not some of you guys may think his reign has gotten stale and that's because of wwe booking and not finding credible talent or letting go of all the credible talent they had go to the wayside or let them go to aew that's on them that's on them but right now, as it stands, Roman Reigns is still the best thing on WWE television. If you disagree, that's fine. But coming at me saying, oh, now I'm riding his nuts. No, man. I've been liking what he's been doing. I've been liking his character change. And I'm, I'm rocking with it until they finally take the title off of him. And hopefully it builds a new star. And plus, he's made that blueberry belt seem way more important than it ever should have. But he's made that damn near the number one belt in the company just saying if anybody can make a blueberry championship seem legit legit you gotta show them some love you gotta give them some respect so this should be a good one enough talking let's get right into this video One of the most fascinating things in pro wrestling are character arcs. How someone who's hell-bent on gaining the admiration of an audience can go from a person of the people to an evil villain focused on nothing but themselves and winning. Mm -hmm. This character arc best describes Roman Reigns. Having a metamorphosis from borderline cringe babyface to a bona fide heel superstar. It's been during this character shift where he's had an over 530 plus day championship reign plucking the universal title from obscurity and bringing it back to relevance. Proving mm -hmm. that the man makes the title, the title doesn't make the man. A reign that's lasted the better part of two years, had ups, downs, and everything in between. But the one thing it's done without a doubt is cemented a superstar, made a generation-defining star, and given us some great moments in the process. So let's rewind the tape back and take a look at the reign so far. Telling you, man. He, this is the this is what Vince ultimately wanted from the jump, just as a face, and it didn't work. And now, this is exactly what Vince wanted, bro. Exactly what he wanted. It took a few years to get it, but this is what he wanted, man. But before we get into the title reign, we gotta talk about the circumstances surrounding Roman Reigns, the character, and the human. See, around 2015, WWE began a mega push of Roman Reigns, wanting him to be the company's next top babyface. This was met with a critical response from the fans, many voicing their displeasure, but some saying to just let it play out. Though there was backlash in the growing age of social media, WWE stayed persistent with the plan they had in mind. Even with the fake the contacts. Who remembers Reigns with the fake contacts? Ugh. It was just too much. They were trying too hard, bro. Beat stars like John Cena, Brock Lesnar, and even become the second person to ever beat The Undertaker at WrestleMania. And over the coming years, it basically became a running project that was Roman Reigns. Some fans even becoming so disenfranchised that they completely shut off WWE. Yep. The problem stemmed in him being presented as someone he just wasn't. 
Yep. Like, we had just come off Super Cena, and now they were basically hitting copy-paste and giving this guy a responsibility which, in the most respectful way possible, he didn't seem ready to shoulder just yet. So Mm-mm. over time, by virtue of him being the constant on WWE programming, always winning titles, he became the company's number one star, whether you liked it or not. But many fans still wanted to see a different side of Roman Reigns. After all, the silent assassin in the shield is what fans fell in love with in the first yes. place. So life was good for us, everything was going well, and then came 2020. Threw a wrench into everyone's life, including WWE's. It was during that time where Reigns told WWE that he'd be taking some time off because he was immunocompromised and he wanted to take care of his family. Reigns pulling out of WWE just as he was supposed to face Goldberg for the Universal title at WrestleMania 36. So time passed and WWE soldiered on without him, but there was still a big hole left to be filled. Until... SummerSlam 2020. Yep. The main event match was Braun Strowman versus The Fiend for the Universal title. At the end of the night, The Fiend stood tall, the brand new Universal Champion, and out came Roman Reigns, laying waste to both Braun Strowman and The Fiend. Mm-hmm. Social media was buzzing, not only because of the return, not only because of his new physique, hell, not even because of the veneers. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. He dropped the contacts, got some veneers. I'm with it. <laughs> His attitude and mannerism suggested that he was finally a heel. Yeah. This question was answered on the very next SmackDown where Reigns sat side by side with his former adversary, Paul. Once people weren't sure. They was like, we're not sure yet. He looks like a heel, but we're not sure. But once we saw Paul, I was like, they did it. They pulled the trigger. And boy, it was great. Heyman, an alliance we never thought that we would see. Oh. One of the greatest wrestling managers and minds of all time now aligns with the company's top star. We come to the following Sunday in the Thunderdome and it's payback. And since Reigns hasn't signed the contract for the title match, it's only Braun and Bray in the main event until Bray hits a superplex, which causes the ring to collapse. Of course. So like the scheming heel he was, he bided his time, came out, signed the contract on the ramp, entered himself into the match, and a little while later, a spear to Braun Strowman, and he got the one, two, three. Reigns was now the brand new Universal Champion, Just and like the that. reign had begun. Just like that. Oh, man. From here, his character took a complete 180. Now coming down to the ring with a more methodical walk, no smile, completely committing to the heel character. Even the Universal title had a shine when it sat on Reigns' shoulder. He was calling himself the best performer of this generation. Paul Heyman told us that this man was the champion of all champions. This man was about family, tradition, legacy, and the responsibility of being a champion. And Heyman said that he was no longer an advocate, but a special counsel. Special counsel to the man who was no longer known as the big dog, but the tribal chief. Once they got rid of the same night where Once they got rid of the big dog, it was it was no turning back. You gotta get rid of the big dog moniker. Means his cousin Jay Uso won a number one contender's fatal four-way match, and with it came an opportunity at Roman Reigns for the Universal Title at Clash of Champions. With this, also began one of the best executed mm-hmm. character arcs in recent WWE oh, history. Oh, so good! The one of Jay Uso. Reigns was telling Jay that he's gonna whoop his ass just like when they were kids, but it was all love. Telling Jay that there was no way he could capture this title because the family depended on Reigns. Oh, this is even the bloodline. Hawaii family promo bloodline feud was so good. Reigns was showing Jay that he actually cared about him, but his expressions showed otherwise. He was telling Jay that he didn't understand the accountability that that title had on it. That he would give him this title if he could, but he can't shoulder that responsibility. That it'll never be Jay. It'll always be Roman. This Basically so good, bullying man. him like a little brother. Yep. But man, Jay was emotional and we were watching the soap opera of all soap operas. Mm-hmm. And Jay said that he'd been battling this his entire life. When people thought of Roman, they knew exactly who he was. The cream of the crop. The best of the best. But when they thought of him, they asked, which one are you? Jay having mm-hmm. belief in himself angered Roman, so he put his hands on his cousin and it was time for Clash of Champions. And in the main event of that show, it was all about family. 
Reigns dominates for the most part, but Jay hangs in there. Throughout the whole match, Reigns is just verbally assaulting Jay about the family and how he'll never be good enough. It was in that same match where Reigns added a new move to his arsenal, the low blow <laughs> kick out. A move that we would see him use every now and then to get the upper hand. At the end stages of that match, Reigns hits Jay with two spears and he picks his face up off the mat, shows the camera, and he tells Jay that this is his business and he's just toying with him. He Damn. asks for him to tell the entire world that he is the head of the table and Jay just says, not today. Roman's just screaming, acknowledge me, and Jay says that I won't. Out comes Jimmy Uso, Jay's twin brother, who was injured at this point, and he tells his brother that he's going to throw in the towel, that he doesn't need to prove a damn thing to him. Jimmy, unable to see his brother bear the pain, throws in the towel, and Reigns retains the Universal title. On the following SmackDown, Roman was asking Jay to acknowledge him, and Jay told Reigns that he had finally shown his true colors, and whatever Reigns did, he couldn't break his spirit. Reigns tells Jay that he loves him more than anyone, and if he wants him again, it's on at Hell in a Cell. And Jay says that he accepts. No matter what the conditions are, he accepts. It was later revealed that this match would be a Hell in a Cell match, but with I Quit rules. Another mm -hmm. successful title defense came for Reigns when he beat Braun. And I usually don't like just random spontaneous Hell in a Cells unless it's feud ending, but I made an exception for this one because the story was actually... Very entertaining, compelling, and I like what they were building here. On Strowman on the season premiere of SmackDown, and on that show, he killed Braun Strowman afterwards, telling Jay that if I can do this to him, just imagine what I'll do to you. We get to Hell in a Cell, and this match was a storytelling masterpiece. Mm -hmm. Reigns lays a beating on Jay, and he's once again just taunting him at every turn, telling him that he's out, but he just can't put Jay away. He hits him with a spear with a whip with steel steps and Jay just won't say the words until Reigns is about to drop steps on Jay's head and out comes Jimmy to save his brother. He cradles him and Reigns falls to the mat. Jimmy is telling him that this is your family. Whatever you're going this through. This was some solid fight. acting, bro. Reigns he sold this. And he just can't believe what he's become. He, says, he sold this. I don't this. even know who I am anymore. Says I'm sorry. Shakes hands with Jimmy. But just then, he pulls him into a guillotine choke, and because he can't bear his brother's pain, Jay quits. Reigns stands atop both Usos and is later crowned the head of the table mm -hmm. by Alpha and Sika at the top of the stage. The color of the cell may have been bright red, but no colors were more evident than the ones of Roman Reigns. On the following SmackDown, Jay is crying and he tells Roman that he hates him, but by the end of the night, he comes to his senses, aligns himself with Reigns, and he shows his allegiance mm -hmm. by acknowledging him as the head of the table. It takes a while for Jay to straighten up though. It looks like Reigns is trying to better Jay for his benefit, even though everything is actually being done for Roman's best interest. Yep. Later on, Jay... St typical, typical manipulation, narcissistic, narcissistic tendencies right there. Like, it's all for him, but he's making it seem like it's to better Jay. It was to better the bloodline. That's what made it so good. Because it was all about just getting everyone to fall in line. Fo I got you guys. Follow me. Even though it's all about me. I'm, it, it's not really about you guys. I don't really... I care about you, but only when it benefits me. I love that. Starts to elevate himself. That's pretty Becomes cool. a featured player on SmackDown. And main event Jey Uso was born. Mm -hmm. With Survivor Series on the horizon, a rivalry was reborn. Roman Reigns and Drew McIntyre, the one and two in the company, yep. champion versus champion. Leading up to that show, Reigns was calling Drew his favorite number two, saying that he was proud of him, but he was in the right place at the wrong time. If not for Reigns, Drew would have been the company's number one. And right here, Reigns' newfound promo ability was on full display. One mm -hmm. of his biggest flaws with the whole big dog character was the promos. Yep. Right here, with a slower cadence in his voice, the more methodical word choice, it was on a new level. With that, WWE being able to control the Thunderdome reactions also helped it a ton. Survivor Series comes and this champion versus champion match ends with the Universal Champion standing tall. And now Reigns went from one familiar foe to another. That being Kevin Owens who was trying to convince Jay that- That was a fantastic feud. If you got Kevin Owens, that Kevin Owens series, oh my god that shit was great. 
I love that feud they had. Oh, man. It was, they had some great matches, Peggy bro. was being used, telling Reigns to take his family drama elsewhere and sitting at the head of the announce table, asking Reigns to step right up. Roman was manipulating Jay and telling him to go after Owens, while Owens just kept getting the upper hand. So much so that he earned himself a universal title match at TLC. Not before Reigns would lay out Jay and give him some tough love, telling him that losing just is not accepted. Reigns was introducing himself to Owens' family over broadcast mm -hmm. TV, telling them that he was the reason that Owens got paid and their family was functional. The reason why this company was still afloat. And Owens, no matter what they piled on top of him, just wouldn't stay down. Yep. TLC comes and these two just beat the living shit out of each other. Great. Jay's getting involved, but KO fights him off. Owens is bumping like a madman, but at the end of it, it's still not good enough. A low blow on the ladder to Owens from Reigns, followed by a guillotine choke, and Reigns unhooked his title to retain. A rematch followed on the Christmas edition of SmackDown where Jay would once again help Reigns retain the title, handcuffing Owens to the cage, yep. and Reigns calmly making his way out, holding onto his title. So over the next little while, they got rid of Kevin Owens by throwing him off the Thunderdome platform, and a new number one contender was going to be crowned. Reigns was blaming Adam Pearce for putting his family in harm's way, so a gauntlet match was set up, and the final two ended up being Shinsuke Nakamura and Adam Pearce. Reigns interfering so that at the Rumble, he could get his revenge on Adam Pearce. But good old Johnny Sins wormed his way out of it by saying that he was unable to compete due to injury and in his place was going to be Kevin Owens. The thorn That last man standing match, loved it. The ending was kind of botched, but that match was so fun. That match Reigns was so fun. that just wouldn't leave. That was Reigns so fun. Reigns and Owens, Royal Rumble 2021. Oh, that was so fun. Last man standing for the Universal title. This match was amazing. This Steps match was so Owens fun. Steps to head. Bro. Owens got chucked off the platform again. Reigns drove a golf cart right into Owens. But KO, he just had to pull off something crazy. So he raises a forklift to its oh highest setting. God. It's a swanton bomb <laughs> onto Reigns. But oh, it's still That not. shit was tough, bro. I watched that match and I was marking the fuck out. That shit was cold. I was like... This is, it. you knew at the end of a pay-per-view, Roman was going to main event, and you knew the match was going to be good, bro. This is what I mean by he was carrying the company on his back during the pandemic era. I'm sorry. He just was. He was the best thing WWE had going and still one of the best things. I don't and care no, what y'all say. Until it looks like it's finally over. Owens had Reigns handcuffed to a lighting rig. But Reigns got his hands on the ref, got out of the handcuffs, and he retained the Universal title. And you guys all know what Royal Rumble season means. That's where the road to WrestleMania officially begins. And on that night, he saw clearly. The winner of the Royal mm -hmm. Rumble was Edge, whose story we all know. One of the all-time GOATs who retired because of injury, and somehow in the most insane way, after doctors told him that he would never wrestle again, managed to do it. And he found himself in the second prime of his career. So, Edge had the choice. Drew McIntyre and the WWE title, or Roman Reigns and the Universal title. But Roman didn't think it was much of a choice. He demanded that Edge choose the number one champion. <laughs> Who remembers that? <laughs> Man, he just went fucking crazy. Paul got scared. <laughs> that shit was mad funny, bro. <laughs> the number one star. That Edge should just quit the games and choose him for Mania. But Edge said that he wanted to wait until Elimination Chamber. At that show, it was going to be an Elimination Chamber match with the winner of that match being able to challenge Roman Reigns for the Universal title. That match came down to Daniel Bryan and Jey Uso with Bryan taking the win. Out came Roman, picked the bones, and he retained his Universal mm -hmm. title. And right after, the question was answered. Edge hit Reigns with a spear, pointed at the Mania sign. So it was going to be Edge versus Reigns at WrestleMania 37, the first pay-per-view in over a year with fans, Spear versus Spear. Yep. But Daniel Bryan just had to get involved. He said he wanted a rematch because he didn't feel like the chamber match was fair, so his title match was granted to him at Fastlane 2021. Mm -hmm. In the process Good pay-per-view too. Good main match, event too. This left Edge fuming. This was supposed to be his shot that he rightfully won at the Rumble. So after beating Jey Uso, Edge was made the special ringside enforcer for the match at Fastlane. Come Fastlane, Reigns and Bryan hit it out of the park as yep. they always do. 
but you know you're watching WWE, otherwise known as Screwy Finish Central. Mm -hmm. The ref gets taken out with a running knee, and Edge enters the ring. Then Jay takes out Edge, and Brian gets rid of Jay and Edge. So it's just him and Roman left in the ring. Brian catches a spear into a yes lock, and for the first time in his career, Reigns taps out. That's yep, it. and that's what makes it cool. He actually tapped. It doesn't count. The ref didn't count it. But he actually made him tap, bro. He made him tap. He had never tapped out before. And that's what, oh, man. It was, that whole sequence was just crazy, bro. Tiniest of taps, but the ref doesn't see it. So Edge goes rogue, comes back into the <laughs> ring. Lays Edge does go rogue, man. Hey, man. We got to get the rogue shit going, bro. Edge does. He went mega rogue. I loved it. Both men with a chair and Reigns falls to the cover to retain the universal title. SmackDown comes and Daniel Bryan plays his favorite card, the It Wasn't Fair card. He holds down the show until he gets a universal title match at WrestleMania. So at the end of the night, Johnny Sins returned and he made it official. Edge versus Daniel Bryan versus Roman Reigns, triple threat match for the universal title at WrestleMania. Which, the more you think about it, the cooler and more heartwarming it is. Mm -hmm. Daniel Bryan, guy's career got cut short with an injury, he was back. Edge had to retire because of a career threatening injury. He was back. Reigns fought off leukemia, and now he was on the run of his career. The lead up to WrestleMania was about destiny, and really, mm -hmm. it was unpredictable as to who was going to win. Come WrestleMania, the vibe was just different. The first pay-per-view with fans in over a year, and it just felt so special. We get to night two of the buy one, get one free extravaganza, buy and one, the get one event free. is Daniel Bryan, Edge, and Roman Reigns. Fantastic and this match was a heart attack waiting to happen. Reigns powerbombing Brian into the announce table, Edge spearing Reigns as he stood on steel steps, Woo. Edge using the bar from a steel chair to attempt to tap out Reigns, a double submission on the Universal Champion. And that was just that sight alone. Both of them having him in the submission. There's nowhere for him to go. Oh, man, bro. This is... <sighs> I love to see it. And I hope we're able to get a fantastic match this year uh, between Brock and Roman for both titles. Champion, Jay being the biggest shit disturber since COVID. Action everywhere you looked, close falls. You thought Edge had it, then you thought Brian had it. Yeah. Well, then Reigns actually had it. And you know what he did? He pinned not one, but both challengers at the same time. Ending WrestleMania 37 on top. Ending WrestleMania 37 as the god of all gods and the king of the industry. They even printed a shirt. Mm-hmm. Smash them, stack them, pin them. Next up for him was Cesaro, in which the whole storyline was basically him dodging Cesaro and being way more concerned about... Easily one of Cesaro's best matches. I wish it the feud was a little bit longer. That match they had, fan-fucking-tastic, bro. I love that match. They actually made you believe he could actually somewhat get the job done, bro. Daniel Bryan. So Reigns made a little proposition. If he gives Bryan one last title match and Bryan loses, he's banished from SmackDown. He wins and he's the Universal Champion. This was the point in Reigns' character arc where he just couldn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. After Mania, this dude just went like, nah, it's not that I kicked his cousins out of his business. Two thirds of the Shield once again hinting at meeting again. Reigns and Jimmy were still getting heated at one another and Jimmy was told that either he could stand with Reigns or he could take his ass home. This was the overarching story heading into mm -hmm. WrestleMania Backlash, which surprisingly was more of a focus than the actual Universal title match. Yeah, Even on was. the day of, Jimmy was saying that the name on Roman Reigns' locker room should say Reigns and his bitch Jey Uso. The company teasing us with a possible Uso split. But yep. WrestleMania Backlash wasn't about the Usos. It was about Reigns and Cesaro who had a hard-hitting match. And at the end of the night, Reigns reigned supreme once again. Out came Rollins to confront Reigns, but it wouldn't be just yet. From here, Reigns was focused on getting Jimmy to buy in. So the Usos were challenging for the SmackDown Tag Team titles against the Mysterios. A match which Reigns interrupted and he got his hands on Rey Mysterio and his son Dominic. Ray now wanting to fight for his son with Father's Day. Yeah, I remember Ray that when he fucking did. He killed Dominic. Just threw this nigga's 
Get the fuck out of here, bro. <laughs> Who's disposed of Mysterio inside Hell in a Cell on SmackDown, yeah. adding yet another legend to his growing list of victims. Mm -hmm. It was at this point where the Thunderdome was in its final days and WWE was headed back onto the road. The summer was heating up and the next show coming up was Money in the Bank. And a legend returned to cash in. Cash in his rightful title match against Roman Reigns. Mm -hmm. That man was Edge. Looking to get the match that he was supposed to have at WrestleMania 37. Oh man. Woo! Ah, oh, this is going Edge down memory lane. Leading up to Money in the Bank was terrorizing the Usos, who both now stood firmly behind Roman Reigns, telling anyone that would listen that at Money in the Bank, he'll complete the comeback story and win the title. So, Money in the Bank comes and the matches for the Bloodline were the Usos versus the Mysterios for the SmackDown Tag Team titles and Reigns versus Edge for the Universal title. On the other end, Seth Rollins was losing his mind over Edge being given an opportunity mm -hmm. that he believed was his. That show comes and the Usos win the tag team titles. It's all up to Reigns to hold it down for the family at the end of the night, so we get to the main event. They both smash it, but Roman Reigns ends up taking the win after a distraction from Seth Rollins, yep. who squared up to Reigns once again. But again, it wasn't time for their paths to cross. For Rollins, the hurdle was Edge. Eliminate Edge and his path to the Universal title was clear. So Edge and Rollins are brawling, leaving Reigns all alone in the ring. Grabs a mic and he tells the whole world to acknowledge him. Just then, Reigns' predecessor was back. Yep. The man who held down the company for over a decade, John Cena, made his return to WWE definitely after was over a year. Definitely marked break. out for that and moment. It was clear as day what he wanted. He was here for Roman Reigns at SummerSlam for the Universal title. Asking him to accept the challenge, but Reigns said no. So that slot at SummerSlam was now open. So Finn Balor decides to offer Reigns a challenge instead, and there's one thing left to do. A contract signing, but that didn't end up happening. Mm -mm. Corbin was in his best form, also looking for a title match, and he took out Balor, and then Cena came out to take out Corbin. Uses some technical finesse, otherwise known as a blue sharpie, signs the contract, <laughs> and the two were on. What WWE called the biggest match in SummerSlam history. So these two were breaking the fourth wall. Reigns said Cena's career was like missionary position. Cena said Reigns ran Ambrose out of WWE. Said that Reigns had to change his character every so often because people stopped caring about him. <laughs> References to CM Punk. And Cena was telling Reigns that he's not here to promote. He's here to demote. Demote Roman Reigns and make him look like the biggest failure in this company's history. On the final show before SummerSlam, Reigns simply gave a guarantee, saying that if he didn't beat Cena, he was going to leave WWE. We get to SummerSlam, 50,000 people at Allegiant Stadium, mm -hmm. and this match felt huge. It did. Two generations colliding, so much smack This talk, was a big... So but the Big one fight thing that field. gave this match away was Reigns saying that he was going to leave WWE. Yeah. Of course, he wasn't going to leave. So after surviving three AAs, Reigns hits one, just one spear, and that does it. He beats John Cena, and he cements himself even further. But once that match was over, the beast was unleashed. Mm -hmm. Brock Lesnar came hunting, and he was here for Roman Reigns. He made his return after over a year and man how things had changed. Mm -hmm. His advocate was now with Roman Reigns and there were so many questions to be answered. Here WWE began two simultaneous builds. One for Reigns vs Balor at Extreme Rules, the other for Reigns vs Lesnar. We're not even going to talk about that. The match itself had the makings of being something great, it's just the ending. Oh, that ending was, oh man, Balor was, was he, his character could not be recovered after that whole debacle. Oh, at Crown Jewel. The Lesnar story was the more intriguing of the two. Mm -hmm. Paul Heyman caught between Brock Lesnar, who he had known for 20 years, and the man whose family he'd known for even longer, Roman Reigns. The whole story was about Brock getting into Roman's mind that Heyman is here to screw him over and that he knew that he was going to be at SummerSlam and Reigns just becoming more aware of his surroundings and starting to doubt Heyman. The Balor story was pretty simple. After Balor didn't get his match at SummerSlam, now he wanted it. So it was granted to him on an episode of SmackDown, and he lost. Mm -hmm. But once he lost, the demon lights flooded the arena, and it was going to be Demon Balor. Yeah, I the, the demon just... <laughs> I was just, oh man, if you're going to bring this character out, 
you book yourself in a, a predicament because you got to have him win. Versus Roman Reigns at Extreme Rules, which Reigns won once again after I don't know who cut the rope. According to <laughs> this guy, it was Brock. In my opinion, this was one of the low points for this title reign was the Balor feud. Yeah, I know it a was. lot of people wanted to see it because they thought Finn Balor would just be rejuvenated after coming back from NXT. But since they were doing two builds at the same time, it kind of became hard to believe that Reigns was going to lose to Balor. Next up for him was Brock Lesnar and Crown Jewel. And these two had a short but drama-filled match, with the high spot being Paul Heyman conflicted at who to give the Universal title to. The ref was knocked out, so he of just course. throws it into uh. the center of the ring, and both men fight for it. Reigns gets the upper hand, uses the title to get the win over Lesnar. He flies out of Saudi Arabia with the Universal title all to himself. He and his bloodline, still the best on SmackDown. From here, it's SmackDown vs. Raw again, with the main event of Survivor Series being champion vs. champion. Big E vs. Roman Reigns with Reigns taking the win. From here, mm -hmm. he feuded with the New Day for a little bit before Sami Zayn became the number one contender for the Universal title, and Brock returns again. Brock forced Sami to have his title match on SmackDown, which Reigns ended up retaining again, and now we were headed for a brand new pay-per-view, WWE J1. And the main event was going to be Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns once again for the Universal title. But on the road to 2022, Paul Heyman was being sus, which led Reigns to asking Paul a simple question. Was he an advocate or was he a special counsel? And Paul answered by saying that he was protecting Reigns from Brock Lesnar. Reigns Superman punched Heyman and the partnership appeared to be over. WWE teased Paul Heyman retiring after he basically didn't have a side to go to now. Mm -hmm. and now it was time to begin a brand new year. We arrive on the very first day of 2022, we're ready for WWE Day 1, and unfortunately, Roman Reigns tests positive for COVID-19. So instead, Brock Lesnar is added to the Fatal 4-Way WWE title match, and he goes on to win. Mm -hmm. And Paul Heyman reverts back to siding with Brock Lesnar. But on SmackDown, there were still some teases that Heyman's allegiance still lied with Roman Reigns. Now Reigns and Lesnar were both champions. So Reigns looked to his next challenger, and with him already having ran through basically everyone on SmackDown, yep. management looked to Raw and a familiar sound knocked on the door. The theme song of the trio that helped Reigns become a superstar, The Shield. And on the other side of that door was Seth Rollins. Mm -hmm. After teasing it and teasing it and teasing it, it was finally going to happen at the Rumble. I will say this. I I enjoyed their match. They the match that they had uh at the at the Royal Rumble was that shit was top notch. That shit was really, really good. Seth Rollins coming out there with the shield theme music. That shit was fantastic, man. Brother versus brother. So much history between these two. But Reigns seemingly couldn't beat Rollins when it mattered most. Mm -hmm. Now telling Rollins that he was in God mode. The longest reigning champion in 35 years. Only four men holding a title for longer. Hulk Hogan, Bruno Sammartino, mm -hmm. Pedro Morales, and Bob Backlund. We come to the Rumble and it was Batman versus Joker. Yep. The master of mind game Seth Rollins comes out dressed like he's about to go to war with his brothers in the Shield but he was about to go to war against him. Outfit, the song, and everything else. This match got started, and it was crazy. This was one of the few times you actually thought that Reigns might lose. Yeah. Close falls, action in every corner, and Reigns clearly having his mental thrown off by Rollins. So much so that Reigns didn't want to win this match. He wanted to get even. Lost the match by DQ, mm -hmm. holding on to his title, took a chair to the back of Rollins, and in the most poetic fashion, he got even. Yep. But his night wasn't over yet. Later in the night, it was Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar for the WWE title. The match in which Reigns interfered, hit a spear on Lesnar, asked Heyman to hand him the title, and he hit Brock with it, and he offered Heyman the hand of forgiveness. Cost Lesnar the WWE title, signaling that things were far from over. Heyman and Reigns now back together. Lesnar was seeking revenge, so later that night he won the Royal Rumble and Which he I said he was going to challenge like. Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. But before we got to Mania, it was Goldberg who was next for Reigns. 
The match that was supposed to happen two years ago at Mania and Reigns was saying that he was gonna Goldberg Goldberg. Meanwhile, Lesnar was competing in the Elimination Chamber for the WWE title. That show arrives, Reigns beats Goldberg to retain the title, and at the end of the show, Lesnar wins the Elimination Chamber to make it champion versus champion at WrestleMania. So that brings us to the now. Reigns and Lesnar at WrestleMania 38. Champion versus champion, winner take all. The two men who have battled for what seems like forever. Now going to meet once again at the Showcase of the Immortals. Praise and problems. Now let's quickly break this down. This title reign is one of the greatest reigns of all time. Mm -hmm. It's going to be looked at for years and years and years. It's not just about the duration, but about the names too. Mysterio, Cena, Goldberg, Edge, Lesnar, Daniel Bryan. Some of the best to ever do it. He's mm -hmm. beaten them all. This has put him over the top. And people who still have that stigma on Reigns, I'd say just watch him with an open mindset. He's truly come a long way since 2015. He's easily the most entertaining thing on WWE television. Facts. The high spot of this reign for sure has been the John Cena feud, the Jey Uso feud, and the stuff with Rollins. I've given this reign a lot of praise, and I mean a ton of praise, mm -hmm. but we gotta talk about the other side too. Cause let's the stale, boring repeat, this is the other side of it as well. And I, I understand when people bring this up, I can't even fault them for it because it, it does kind of get repetitive, especially when, once again, this goes back to WWE not really having anybody else for him to viably face outside of Brock Lesnar. They don't really have anyone that we would believe could actually do it because they haven't built up anyone else. That's on WWE's part. Let's be honest, there's some problems here too. The first is the booking. Obviously, Reigns has been booked very strong, but that booking has come as a sacrifice to mm -hmm. others on the roster. He's been built so much above everyone else that everything else just feels throwaway and not as important. Yep. With that, they're throwing all their chips at one star, which in the short term seems amazing, but in the long, long term, term can really hurt you. If that star gets injured or unforeseen circumstances happen, then you're basically screwed. Yep. Being a one-trick pony is a dangerous slope. There's two guys on the roster that have been booked strong, and you guys know exactly who those two guys are. You know what the other thing is? You need to have the conversation of keeping things fresh. If you keep running with the same thing, people will tune out. Because let's yeah. be honest, that's the nature of the beast of wrestling fans. All in all, one of the greatest title reigns of all time, without a doubt, made the Universal title feel relevant again. And whoever beats him is going to become a huge star. And that's the thing. That's the whole shebang. At the end of the day, this title reign, what he's done, it needs to result in creating a megastar after this. Whoever beats Roman for this, they are the next guy up. Simple as that. They are an instant made star. Simple as that. Simple. Instant made mega star. The same thing you had when Walter had the title for that long. He was a mega star in a sense for UK, you know, the UK fans and us NXT fans. Like you knew Walter was that dude because of how long that title reign was, the matches that he had, and just the imposing threat he was. If they would have kept things going and maybe, you know what I'm saying, potentially built him up in NXT and brought him to the main roster in a substantial fashion, you would think he would be the next guy up to take down Roman Reigns because of how dominant he was, how dominant they made his title reign become. So ultimately, it just comes down to who will WWE book to be the next guy? And honestly, I don't know if WWE has that person right now. I mean, they have the potential for someone to do it. They just got to book it correctly. They got to build up somebody where it's like, I believe they could get the job done. So I don't know. Comment down below. Let me know who do you guys think would be the next champion after Roman Reigns drops it? Or do you think it's not gonna happen he'll probably just give up the title at some point and go to hollywood like what do you guys think is gonna happen in the future here but i appreciate all the love and support road to 70k appreciate y'all kicking me see y'all next one peace